This is the Kicking It podcast where we talk all things women's rugby league and stories to inspire and entertain. Come kick it with us. Welcome back to another episode of Kicking It. My name is Kiana Takairangi and I'm joined by my bestie and co-host, Corbin Baxter. Corby, how are you? Hey, Kicks. I'm good. Um, it's been a big week. Um, family's been busy, but um, it's been a good time. How have you been? I've been good. I know you mentioned your family. We've got a couple of special guests here in the studio. Not in the studio. They're outside, but yes, they'll come in soon. Just outside. They're um, keen to come in and check it out. And we've got a really good episode today, don't we? Yes, we do. So we're going to um, talk about Women's State of Origin Game 2, all things team lists, ins and outs, key players and predictions. Yep. And I think New South Wales only have to win by nine. So that's going to be an exciting one. Yeah, super exciting. We'll get into that soon. But the other thing we're going to chat about is a little bit about you, your life. What's going on oh with, with Bodie and Carter <laughs> keeping you busy? Yeah, yeah. I'm really excited to talk about that. Um, so that should be good. We'll get into that shortly. Um, but one thing I wanted to actually get started with to start off is a little bit of a look back at episode four. Mm-hmm. So I loved having Emma in the studio. So did I. Such a great guest to start off with. Yep. Um, really insightful. I love how she kind of gave us a really good insight into um, that sevens transition from oh, going from league to sevens and then back to league. Yes. She kind of opened up, which was really nice. Yeah, I agree. I think she had some some great stories to share. She's obviously very well travelled. She's um, yeah seen both sides of rugby league and rugby union and had some really nice insight. Um, got a bit vulnerable at some points too, which is nice to see. And I think um, our audience would have loved that. They did. And there was actually a lot of good uh, response yeah. back from a couple of topics that we spoke about in that. So the first one I want to bring up, this one was a very <laughs> funny one. <laughs> I think you already know what I'm about to say. I do. Not the fairy bread. Not the fairy bread. <laughs> <laughs> so we need we, to get that on a shirt or something. I know. Oh. Sh- should we speak to Ice about it? Maybe. Do you reckon he's listening? Are we at that status yet? <laughs> I can <Ice>. picture it. <laughs> I literally thought about it across my mind. I was like, imagine a, a jumper or something yeah. with a little, not the fairy bread. <laughs> it would be like a cute, like white or creamy kind of jumper. Love that. A bit of sprinkle of colour here and there. We need to speak about it. Okay, let's make it happen. We'll make it happen. Um, <laughs> but yeah, with that story that we put out, so we kind of asked the question on whether Maddie's fairy bread plate was acceptable. Or we said, does it make the cut? Does it not make the cut? Yeah. 58% of people voted that it did make the cut. What's <laughs> doing? Mind blown. <laughs> Literally. But there are a lot of funny comments around it. Yeah. Um, I know our opinion was definitely that it did not make the cut. And there were some others who definitely agreed with us. So a couple of really good comments that I want to mention. Um, my well-being manager up at Newey, she's a proud Italian and her comment was this is the best as a proud Italian I couldn't agree more <laughs> um, I know Danny from Puma yeah Danny we love you we love you Danny kind of wrote the same sort of thing Italians would never <laughs> sorry With the this yeah. hand emoji <laughs> they know and then we had another one and this was from one of the mums of the girls that we train Chrissy she wrote this is so relatable party of 10 question mark the Greeks will cater for a hundred plus no also, fairy bread inside she's even bagging us yeah 10 to 15 is not substantial enough not enough so <laughs> I love that I think it's really funny and I love that a lot of people can relate to that so it wasn't just the, the Maldives and the Islanders yeah there's a lot of others that are with us on it too good I love that too and um I just think it was hilarious like we got so many funny comments come in so many people from even when I went to Roosters training um, the night after the episode dropped, like Maya Hill Moana was like, oh, not the fairy bread. So it's it's definitely stuck. Um, but yeah, it was actually hilarious. But yeah, what's with the ratio of people thinking it makes a cut? We must have a, a very white following. I think that was a comment that we got <laughs> pretty frequently as well once we put out the results of it. But anyway, we just know it's safe to say that we won't be inviting any of that 58% to no. any... Any lunches we, we do. Too funny. Um, but we'll have to get that shirt made up soon or the jumper, hey? Yeah. But another talking point was uh, the response to Emma's reel that we mm. put up yep. asking. Actually, we weren't really asking, but we're saying her thoughts on um, when Origin should be played. Yeah. So Emma was pushing, saying that she'd love to play before the men's. Yeah. Heaps of comments coming back around it. Yeah. Some good, yes. some not so good. Yeah, let's read some out. So one was... If they do that, we would have to move Origin to a weekend. People won't show up at 4.45 or 5 p.m. for the game on a Wednesday. Um, The women's should be the opener to the men's, but there can't be a two-hour gap in between games, so similar sort of thing. People won't show up early and wait. 
Um, so I think that that's sort of what I had in my mind when Em brought it up and even over the last few years when people are always asking me, why don't you play before the men's? It's It's been pretty much that reason. Like I agree, on a Wednesday night, I don't think people are going to show up two hours before and stick around for the men's game. Um, but like, it's good that they're talking about it, right? Yeah, exactly right. Because there were a couple of like more negative comments that come from it. Um, I know one of our, another mum of a girl that we train, she wrote a comment back on our TikTok and she was like, definitely like they should definitely play before the men's like the game was amazing but then there was a comment coming back which said amazing question mark there were 30 errors in a 70 minute game i like watching the nrlw but the quality is nowhere near the men's quality yeah and that's literally what we spoke about though in the previous podcast obviously they didn't listen but we're not (laughs) saying that our game is on the same level as the men's and there's a lot of reasons why it's not there um but i think you made mention of what Emma said. Yeah, so last Emma. Week as well. Yeah, like Emma made a comment that she had people she knows coming to her after the game and saying it was such a good game. Like you played so well. Like unlucky. And she's like, she was angry about it. She was like, no, we didn't. It was like a crap game. Um, so she, the fact that people are being honest is like a sign that the game is getting it to where we want it to be. So um, I feel like that we are having people with with some honest feedback is is a good thing obviously we don't want the trolls that are saying nasty things but it yeah it it just shows where the game's at when you can be a bit more honest about it right yeah for sure um and then another one was another comment was you'll grow the game by promoting the league half the time you don't even know that they're playing which i um can also agree with i feel like um, we've spoken about the games come a long way um in a lot of regards but I feel like there's definitely some more promotion that could be done. For example, I did some commentary for the city country game um, in May, I think it was, was that selection for Origin. And like nobody knew about it. It was at um, Cogra. Yeah. Cogra, Jubilee Jubilee. Oval in Cogra. And like the crowd was like pretty pathetic. And I feel like besides me knowing that I was going to be working there, no one, like I wouldn't have known about it otherwise. There was I no didn't know advertisement. Either. I didn't say anything about it. And it could have been such a good opportunity, like sort of like what Emma spoke about, you know, your suburban fields with your families, like that would have been a really good opportunity to make the most of that. And um, yeah, I think there's like some games where we sort of hit the, miss, hit the mark a little bit there. Um, so yeah, a little bit of more work to be done around that too. So um, Although a negative comment, something that I reckon we can learn from and help improve the game for sure. Yeah, for sure. And one other comment that I saw, which I really liked, it was a really good point made. She goes, I like that the standalone women's state of origin matches have affordable ticket prices. I thoroughly enjoyed that live match at Combank Stadium and didn't have to pay an exorbitant is that the word? Exorbitant? Is that a word? Exorbitant. Exorbitant. I think, is I think that the word? Exorbitant. Wrong. Okay. Whatever it is, exorb something. Um, <laughs> she's like, I like that I didn't have to pay a ridiculous amount yeah. for excellent seats. And that is such a good point because I think tickets start at $10 yeah. for the women's game. Yeah. For the men's game. Ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So really good point made. Of course, it would be really cool to see the girls play before, but I don't know how they would work that. I can't yeah, imagine like, would the Would it be the same changing. ticket? And then you just get to go to both. Yeah. Because that's how it works. If you have a, like an NRLW double header, right? You buy a ticket to the men's game and then you can go early to the, exactly. to the women's game. So it's two for one. So the price probably wouldn't change. Yeah. Which would make it a lot harder for a lot of the families and yep. whatnot. So some really good points there, which are good to see. Yes. Lots of engagement. Yeah. We love that. We love that. If they're talking about women's game, then like that's a good thing. Whether it's good or bad, I feel like it's getting it on the map and that's what we want to see. Exactly. Any publicity is good publicity. Yes. <laughs> um, so let's go straight into Origin, hey? Mm-hmm. Game two. Game two. How exciting. So like we said at the start, New South Wales literally only have to win by nine points and they take the series. Nine points. You think like they should be able to do that, but as history has shown that there hasn't been a game that um, either team have won by more than 10. 10. Yeah. Okay, so it is a tough task. But, of course, probably boring opinion, I think New South Wales can do it. Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm really excited. Let's get into the team list. So for New South Wales, um, a little bit of movement. We've still got Emma Tonegato at the back, Jamie Chapman in the, on the wing, Jessica Sergis and Isabel Kelly in the centres, Tiana Penatani, she's back in. Hopefully Yay. Hammy must be feeling good. She's back on the wing. Talia Fumiono's moved into the six. Jessie Southwell has moved to the seven. Kezi Apps, 
Killy Davis, Millie Boyle, Olivia Koenig, Yasmin Clysdale in the back row. Big one, Samima Taufa. She's back, baby. So yep. excited to see her. Quincy Dodd on the bench. Kennedy Charrington, Sarah or Sala Togatuki, Shaylee Bent. And then 18th man, Cassie Tohihiku. And 19th man, Brooke Anderson. A couple outs. So unfortunately, Rachel Pearson has... Um, Going to miss out on game two and Ellie Johnston, who was in that 18th man position, is now out also. Yep. Uh, great team again though, right? I think that, like you mentioned, Samaya Talfa back in the middle is going to be massive for them. So yep. I'm really looking forward to seeing her impact on the game. You and I have both played beside Mimes um, and just know how great of a player she's she used to play beside. She's an absolute workhorse. Yep. I remember one time up at... Um, Central Coast last year playing for the NRW. It was a triple header and Parramatta had played before us. And I remember we were going into the change rooms and it was completely cleared out except for Mimes yeah. standing there. And she was like still like getting her stuff sorted to get out of the change room. But oh. she's like bandaged up like crazy. <laughs> she's like, I think she had like a sore shoulder. She had an issue with her hand. She like looked like a little bandage bear. She's a I'm warrior. Like, Mimes, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what are you, why are you even still in here? Like, are you okay? And she was just basically saying like how battered and bruised she was. Oh. It was taking a lot longer than everyone else to get out of there. Yeah. But just the amount of like uh, strength that she has to be able to play through the injuries that she plays yep. through. She's come back um, after this shoulder injury. I didn't even think she'd make it back in time. I thought no. that her injury was that bad that she wouldn't be able to play yep. any of the State of Origin games. Yeah. But she's already back. She's a warrior. Like, because she hurt her shoulder in the Harvey Norman grand final, correct? Yep. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I like think exactly the same. Like she doesn't come off the field without a bloody nose, a bloody eye, her cut her eye cut open or like something, something. out of place. Yeah. Um and yeah, it you don't want to see the other guy cuz you're probably there <laughs> worse for wear. I remember I played against her. I think it was um when she moved to yeah para maybe in the 21 season and she cut my lip open i had to get like stitches all the way up her big head (laughs) got me good but um yeah she's just a beast and we spoke with em sort of off off the potty last week and just hearing her talk about hopefully like she wanted her back in the team she Mm. knows that she's such a big part of of that side and um how much she'll add how much value she'll add to the team so i think she'll bring a bit of leadership yeah not a a bit a lot lot. of leadership and um just yes some pure strength and work hard i'm really excited to see her back in the blue me too and another one who's back now is izzy which yep. is so good. So that was a bit of a scare with her, um, the hit to the throat that she caught from Jul- Julia. Yeah. Um, so good to see that she's back. I reckon she's going to be one to watch because I reckon she'll be de- determined to just really leave a mark on the game after getting put out of the game so early in game one. Yeah, for sure. I um, She's been back at Roosters training and um, she had a bit of a, a messed up voice for a couple couple days, but she's finally coming good and um I agree. I think she's going to be out for blood. Um, she's someone who, if she gets knocked down, she wants to come back bigger and better. And, um, yeah, I'm really excited to see her back in there. I think she's going to have a big game. She hates losing. She really takes it personally. Um, and, yeah, I'm really pumped for that too. Are there any other players that you think in particular we should be looking out for? Um, oh, I th- I'm excited to see, I'm excited to see Kennedy come off the bench. So she started in game one, I think. Uh, she brings a lot of energy we all know that so she'll be a really good impact player um when you know blues sort of wear down their middles for the first you know 20 25 minutes she can come on and and do her thing and um really do some damage as well Killy davis had a big game in the first game i think she played 70 of this sorry 65 of the 70 minutes um so she's someone who sort of goes unnoticed but just the work she does um does a lot for a team too and also Chapo we didn't talk about her on the last preview but no. she had like a pretty cool like a pretty good game like that try saving run down tackle on Shanae was huge yeah. um and I just would like to see her get into the game a little bit more I know it's really hard on the wing yeah you literally just come in for a couple of scoots here and there and then hopefully the ball gets out to you but um yeah, I don't know how, but I just hope she gets a bit more activated into the game. Yeah, same. I remember seeing her run meters from the last game and I, I reckon I've never seen that from her. She's usually like a 100 plus player easily, but I think it was something like 20 or 30 meters. She just couldn't really get into the game at all. Yeah. And it's, I know how it feels being out on the wing. If you don't get the ball, it's like a really tough game. It can yeah. be a very quiet, lonely kind of feeling out there on the wing, not getting any touches. So hopefully we 
see her more involved. Yeah, for sure. Um, one other player, actually. One person, Emma. I reckon Emma's in for a big game. Yeah. It was really cool speaking to her and getting her insights. And just on the back of that, I feel like she's she wasn't really happy with the game. Not in ge- like not just her performance in general, but as a whole. So I yeah. reckon she'll be coming out for sure, ready to get a win. I agree. I agree. Uh, now let's have a look at Queensland. So one through to eighteen, we've got Tamika Upton at the back. We have China Polata making her debut, and she's come in to replace Julia Robinson, who. Ended up getting suspended. Yeah. We touched on that in the review last time, didn't we? Yeah. Correct decision, I think. Like, Robbo is the loveliest girl. Like, she could not hurt a fly off the field. On the field, she's super tough. But um, I think even she would have known, like, it. Yeah, it's something it was that you an can't accident, do. It was an accident, but, but you can't do she it. copped that one. Yeah, she copped that one well. That's it. We've got Shanae Shizolka and Ivania Polite in the centres. Emily Bass on the wing there. Taryn Aitken and Zahara Tamara in the halves. Shannon Mato at eight. Destiny Brill, Keely Joseph, Tasman Gray in the 11. Romy Tidesall comes in on the back row. So she's getting a start now. Hey, Rom. Yeah. Really exciting. So I'm excited to see her. Um, Ali Brigginshaw at 13. Emma Manslman, Jessica Elliston, Sophie Holyman and Shania Power who has come onto the bench. Yep. Um, Talisha Harden's come into the A-team, which is really exciting for T- Talisha. We've both played beside her as well. Mm-hmm. Um, she's got so much experience, right? She's a she's a vet of the game. Yep. She'll add a lot of experience to that team as well. So exciting to see her there. And then Sienna Lofipo, who has come in at the 19. She, I don't know too much about her, but apparently she's a young gun. She's a playmaker from the Titans who comes in. So Awesome. Yeah, pretty exciting, exciting for her. exciting for her? Yeah, so what are, you, what are your thoughts on the team here? Yeah, so very similar, obviously, to game one. Yep. Um, you know, Robbo forced out. I don't know much about China either. Um, I, I was sort of picking Taryn's brain at training the other night about her. Um, she said that she has she's, – she's still young. She started really strong. She just had a couple injuries which took her out of the game for a little bit and so, sort of um, – yeah, delayed her, you know, obviously making a debut in the Queensland team. But she's getting a chance and I'm, I'm really excited to see what she can put on for her side. Um, I can't wait to see Keely Joseph. I um, think she had a really good first game. <clears throat> she's similar to Samima, like a workhorse would just do the nitty gritty stuff. Um, is also learning how to be a bit more of like a ball playing lock as well to add like another tool to her toolkit. So I think... Um, She's someone who is going to have another big game. She was a star in the first one, so I think she'll be looking to to follow that up again. Um, Emily Bass, I think she had a really good first game as well. She just got her hands dirty, got in there, did, did some work where she was a lot to handle for the New South Wales girls, she scored the two tries, really great finisher. And I think Sinead Sazolka made her look really good. Yep. Um, Sinead is like... Uh, a really great centre, probably someone who's a bit underrated, I yep. think. Like, we all know how good she is, but it's like, you know, you hear your Isabel Kellys and your yeah. Jessica Surges who are huge, um, huge players and huge names and Sinead Sulka is definitely making her way up. But, like, she just knows her role and she just does the little things right. Like, in a centre, it can be a very forgotten position. Sometimes yep. you're literally just like the link or you get cut out half the time. Yeah. But I feel like when she gets her couple opportunities a game, she ices them really well. So I think one point that she did or one play that she did was in the game one where she kind of got Yazzie she kind of bounced on Yazzie yeah, got yeah just like, got to her outside yeah got to yeah. her outside set up her winger and yeah. like that was just a really classy act so yeah I and smart you. because like Yaz literally was playing back row and got pushed to the center so yep. she obviously identified okay a new play here, yeah like let's yeah, That's and Yazzie's, Yazzie's a great player. Like, yeah, she's hard great to defender. Like, yeah. one of the best defending centres back rowers in the game as well. That's so, it. very classy by Sinead. But, um, yeah, they're going to be hard to beat. I think they're going to come in with a lot of confidence, um, obviously with one win up their sleeve. Playing at home, um, playing in North Queensland, I, I played at All Stars there. I remember it being very hot, very sweaty. They're going to be used to those conditions. Yep. Um, New South Wales will not because no, it's been bloody freezing here. Exactly. <laughs> it's been so cold. So um, you would think all things are working for Queensland, but you know what I think? I already know New what you South think. New South Wales can overcome and conquer all. <laughs> <laughs> Dreamer. No, I'm kidding. Um, I'm with you. I think it's going to be like Queensland will be hard to beat. 
one player who I reckon we need to show a little bit of love to, who was prob- probably goes under the radar a little bit as well, is Z. I think she had a great game she in the did. first one. Um, I love just how well she moved the ball. She just gave really quick, excellent servers out to the backs and let them just do their thing, basically. Agreed. And yep. as Didn't overdo back, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, didn't hold on too much. She just gave really good delivery and movement of the ball, which was so good. So, yep. if we see that again, yeah, look out. Because, yeah, the backs had a... Um, you know, they had a great time last they game. field day, didn't they? Exactly. So, Z, hopefully she's on again. Not for you. I know you're not No, not I hope hoping. she does. <laughs> we love Z. We, we do love, love Z. Z. And the one other person who I'm looking forward to is Romy. I reckon, you know, getting her start in Origin, which is really exciting. And she's a Townsville girl. So, she'll yeah. be playing in front of her home crowd. True. Yeah. So, hopefully Romy has a good she'll game. She'll be up for it. Yeah. Getting the start after a debut game one. Yeah. Yeah. Really good exciting for her. But um, obviously your money is on the Blues. Yeah, Blues by 10. <laughs> what do you reckon they need to do though? <laughs> what do they need to do differently to, to get the win? Cause yeah, I um, obviously like errors on both parts was a big, yeah. was a big um, part of the game for game one. I just think they need to dominate the middle. Like I know that's a very cliche thing, but yeah. especially with having Mimes there, I think they're going to rein the game in. They tried, I think they tried to get a little bit... Um, too fancy too early some things just didn't come off like some like the kicking game was a bit rough for them yeah um if jesse and talia can control the game yeah as well like i think it, it's a lot of pressure on jesse like especially with the seven on her back now she's really gonna have to take control of the game yeah um i think you know it's it's hard she's such a young girl but i reckon she's learned from that first game yeah. i have no doubt kylie sort of had a chat with her and she'll come out and she'll be ready to sort of Prove the haters wrong and and, yeah. and have a really big game. I think one thing that she needs to be credited for is her effort in that yeah, last game. 100%. Because like you said, a couple of moments didn't really go away. Probably a couple of key moments she probably wished she could have another crack at. Yep. But her effort was just solid throughout Always the whole there. game. And yep. she could have really like, you know, um, put her head down and gone into her shell. But she didn't do that. She just kind of kept fighting the whole way through. And Agreed. I remember she had some really good defensive moments in that second half. Yep. So that was like a... Like great for sure, she had some great see. touches and like energy. Like when they scored the try, you can yeah. see her getting up to the team yeah. and like, yeah, she um, a great, great team player there. And I'm excited to see Fui in the six. Yeah, I feel like even at NRLW level, she's like floats around in the six in the centers. It's because she's versatile yeah. and she can be a great defender out a bit wider. But I think just giving her that six position, yep. it's where she wants to play, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think she's got like she's a runner. She's got really good eyes up and. Yep. Um, She's quick. I think she'll be great there too. But yeah, I'm back in. I'm back in the blues. Alrighty. I'm going Queensland. Yeah, of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> why? What do you mean why? You're a New South Welshman. Welsh woman. Do you want to get into this for real? Yeah, let's talk about this because okay. um, it is a bit of a debate. Yeah. A lot of Pacific Islanders who um, are not born in Australia but live in either New South Wales or Queensland, even yep. if they live in New South Wales, yep. for some reason, jump on the Queensland bandwagon. Even in the men's, <laughs> mainly the men's actually. Mainly, the men's. mainly okay. the men's. Well, let's just clarify. Actually, I usually support Queensland for the men. For the women, no, I go for let's New South talk, Wales. Let's, let's backtrack. But why do you support <laughs> Queensland in the men? Okay, so I was actually born in Queensland. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I wasn't born in Queensland. Okay, the reason why my dad and brother. Yeah, have always supported Queensland for as long as I remember watching Origin. So okay. when I was a kid, they supported Queensland. So I just decided to support Queensland too. I asked my brother the other day and he reckons the reason why they supported Queensland was because they were the, they were the underdogs for a while, for okay. a long time. So they reckon... So they it was pre-like pre, Cameron Smith, yes. Darren Lockyer days. Yes. It okay. Was, it was before. So Fair. I was like, okay, like I understand that. I like going for an underdog too. It's yep. a bit boring going for the favourite. But it stuck because then I remember throughout all of high school... It was literally me and one other boy in yeah. my year who supported Queensland. And I remember we cop shit for it, like As win or should. loss. Win <laughs> or loss. So like we'd win and we'd be cheering and yeah. they'd be like, Oh, whatever, you're not even from Queensland, you're not a true <laughs> Queensland supporter. And then if we lost, we cop it just as bad. They're like, Oh, you go for Queensland. Yeah, it's a lose lose. It was a lose lose. So that's my reason. But okay. I agree with you. So many islanders yeah. that we know just go for Queensland automatically. I know. I know like my, Matt, my husband hates it. <laughs> like, because <laughs> yeah. he's a high school teacher. He's like, if, if New South Wales lose, he's like, oh, I can't wait. I mean, I do not want to go to school tomorrow. I can't wait to give it to all the Islander boys. Yeah. Actually not give it. He's going to, 
the other way around. When they win, he yeah. can't wait to give it to the <laughs> Islander boys. Are you sure? But um, if they lose, like, I'm going to cop it from them tomorrow. Well, so. it's, it's a good question. Let's put it out to the listeners. Why do Islanders support Queensland? Queensland. Is it because there are a lot of Islanders that live in Queensland? I don't think that's it. I think because they're just not born in New South Wales, yeah. they don't feel like they have to have that allegiance to the state. True. That's my my younger brother was born in Queensland. Yeah. And he supports the Blues. So he's the exception to the rule, maybe. <clears throat> yes, maybe. <laughs> anyway, let us know what you think. Let us know your thoughts. <laughs> but on the men's game, who do you reckon is going to win? Oh. Queensland. <laughs> <laughs> I will yes. never say that. No, nah, but it For is men, tough. Like Latrell's, Latrell's out. Yeah, we just heard. Out again. Um, yeah, they're playing in Queensland. Again, yeah. everything is pointing to Queensland success but so Queensland you I, said it I didn't <laughs> I, I didn't Queensland say it. And success. <laughs> so um, Queensland. I just hope it's a close game me too make it interesting yeah let's go for New South Wales I'll yeah, go for New South Wales even I forgot they've got the decider they still get a third game yeah yeah New South Wales all the way New South Wales for the men absolutely and New for South the girls Wales for the girls yeah yes. I've got to back the girls fine I'll go for New South Wales too good girl so we've got a couple of special guests joining us right now. And as we mentioned before, we have the boys in here, Carter yeah, and Bowden. Woohoo! How are we, boys? Yeah, the boys. <laughs> How are you, Bodie? Hi, Bodie. Welcome. How are you? Oh, <laughs> you like smiles. <laughs> boys have come in today. Tell us about it. We didn't plan to bring both of the boys in. No, we didn't. They've... um. Carter's been off school all week, so he's been a little bit crook. So um, he had – today's Friday. He's had Friday off and not mad about it. Hey, Cardi. <laughs> <laughs> and Bodie was always going to come in and check out the studio today. Hey, buddy. Yes, Bodes. Yeah. You're always getting a start, but we're grateful to have both of you in here today. Yep. We wanted to chat a little bit more about your return and obviously mother of two. Yeah. There's a lot of challenges that you're probably facing. One of – today <laughs> having to bring both of the boys in but we got here and that's totally fine yeah but let's look back on it so I remember when you first told me about being pregnant with Carter mm -hmm. you were 16 at the time it was a while ago wasn't it it was a long while ago <laughs> but was it 16 you were 16 yep, at the I was time 16, yeah so I'm a couple of years older I remember it was my 18th birthday or had just been my 18th birthday yeah now I remember you told me that you're pregnant I remember thinking like you're lying yeah I you're lying you and I like <laughs> laughed at it and I just didn't think anything of it and you're like no like I'm actually pregnant and I it just took me a while right I was like yeah. I don't believe you like <laughs> you're joking so I remember my 18th birthday and you didn't drink and at the time I didn't think too much of it I was yeah. just like oh you're a slack friend like it's my birthday you should <laughs> yeah. be drinking but if you're not going to I'm whatever rude. and that was the point that you used to actually prove your pregnancy yeah yeah I remember I I was really obviously 16 years old and pregnant like it was like had its challenges, but like I'm just such a I cover my um, not anxiety, but like I was obviously a bit of anxiety telling people about it. And I remember telling when I told all my friends, including you, I would do it with like a bit of a giggle. So yep. that's probably why you didn't believe me. You're like, okay, you. good one. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was your 18th birthday. I hadn't drunk. I think I told you maybe the week after, and um, you're like, prove it. And I was yep. like, um. You I didn't drink your 18th and you're like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it made so much sense then. Yes. How funny. A bit funny. But then I also remember you telling me about your pregnancy with Bodie and yeah. it was probably about this time last year. Uh, we were coaching and I remember we'd finished the session and you came up to me and you're like, I've got a secret to tell you. And I was like, oh gosh, like <laughs> what? And then you're like. Did that cross your mind? Yeah. Straight away. For sure. <laughs> but I was like, surely not, but let's just roll with it. Yeah. And it was. It was. Probably surely not like we were right in the middle of like Harvey Norman season. I was supposed to go into like origin camp. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just I thought I'd just blurt it out and let you know. Yes. <laughs> and I believed you a lot easier that time. And I remember just thinking, but wait, we planned a holiday to the Cook Islands at the end of the year. And I remember that was probably the second thing you said. You're like, I'm pregnant. I was like, oh my gosh. And then you're like, so we can't go to Raro. And I was like, <laughs> no. It was literally, that was like the thing that's on my mind. I'm like, it's right when I'm due, I'm going to miss out on the holiday. Yeah. Devastated. I remember that. I so, um, yeah, a lot easier to, to believe that time <laughs> around. But one thing I do remember you saying to me probably a couple years ago was that you didn't want to have kids or if you were to have another, like another baby, yep. 
you wanted to do it when you were done with footy. Like you're like, when I have my next child, I'm going to just be a mum. And yeah. I'm just going to focus on being a mum. <laughs> It hasn't happened. No. <laughs> so let's like tell us. Keeping you on your toes. That's it. Tell us more about it because a lot of people are probably thinking like, oh my gosh, you're amazing. Like you're coming back. Hey. Oh. What's wrong? <laughs> you come back. He's, is he's he got a story. Months? He's got a story. Okay. Tell us. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Five months. Yeah. Five months after. Like tell us what's driving you to, to come back so soon. Yeah. The plan was definitely to wait till I was finished my footy career. I remember having obviously had Carter so young, um, which like no regrets. It was the best thing that ever happened to me and has like, he's been my why for everything, especially footy. Um, But I just remember like when he was only, you know, two, three years old, I was having to go off to different um, footy camps and World Cup was like like five, six weeks away. Like things like that was a lot and I remember looking back thinking when I have my next one I just want to be focused on being a mum I don't want to have to run off and and um you know divide my time yeah Yeah, and I miss him and and whatnot so yeah didn't didn't go the way I planned he came a little bit earlier um but I feel like like we were so ready like Matt and I had been talking about having a baby through COVID like should we just do it and it's like perfect timing to have it in in that little downtime but um no had him a little bit earlier and it's been it's been awesome. It's been tough, challenging to say the least, but um, yeah, so worth it. Like the twelve years difference <laughs> has sort of opened my eyes to how much I've grown as well. Like having Carter at a young age, I've had a lot of support from my mum from the day one, and like she is a huge reason that drives me to make the most of um, you know I my passions and and what I love doing which is playing sport and has grown into playing football um and also just um showing Carter and Bodie that like mum can do like anything I you know nothing's going to change I've always loved playing sport but having them there and um having them in my corner and and in the stadium watching me like Carter's over the years I know when he was younger he didn't really know what was going on but now he's grown into like a young a young gentleman now he actually can be like hey that's my mom like that's pretty cool and yep. um like can tell me that he's proud of me and whatnot and I guess I want that as well with Bodie um he's only five months and I know I got a lot of people asking me like why the hell are you getting back into it so soon um so I guess it's a little bit of that and Also, a little bit of like proving people wrong. Um, Throughout my pregnancy, I had a lot of people asking me like, oh, what are you going to do? Like you have a year off and come back. I'm like, oh, I'm going to like try try come back. I sort of um, felt a bit of like, oh, like hesitancy from people like, oh, like, are you actually able to do that? Like, are you capable of that? And um, hell yeah, you are. (laughs) We'll see. (laughs) But it's just, um, yeah, just proving to myself, not even proving to other people, but proving to myself that I can can do it and get out there and that anything's possible, I guess. I love that. And I love what you say for Cardi because I can see that he's such a big fan of you and yeah. I know that he's very proud of you as his mummy. And it's so cool that, say, like you can go watch his games one day and then he can go watch you yeah. the next day. Yeah. Such a cool thing. Um, but like you also mentioned, being able to come back so soon after a baby, I know that Sammy Bremner has done it a couple of times mm-hmm. and she's just like an absolute freak i remember last season i think it was when she was playing for the sharks yeah um she had just come back from having her second baby and she was just a freak like i remember in our fitness she was just literally at the front every time in the game like her yep. first game back after having baby she absolutely killed it like yep. tore it up and it's just like it's she's on another level yeah i feel like sam and i sort of like tag teams like You'll be pregnant, have a season off. Okay, now I'll get pregnant. You play fullback, I'll have a season off. And like we tag teamed again. Yeah. Um, yeah, so she was awesome with the Sharks. I think she came back the same, maybe four, five months yep. after having Not long after. Lakey. Yep. Um, which is crazy. Um, and yeah, it like, she's like on a whole nother level. She like literally from day one, she's topping the beep, oh, not the beep test, the Bronco and and all the fitness sessions and stuff. But um, it's just crazy. I feel like you don't know your own strength and like a mother's strength like it sounds a bit cheesy but like Matt I remember Matt um saying when I was a bit worried about when I was still pregnant I was like am I gonna like be able to get back in time um he was like I reckon you're gonna come back stronger like like the baby will make you stronger like going through this is gonna make you stronger and like now that I'm sort of through those first few really tough months sort of coming through the other side like definitely it's still 
very challenging. I'm still waking up twice a night or Matt and I are taking turns to, to feed Bodie and, yep. um, you know, Carter's been sick, so get him up and, and make sure he's okay as well. There's like, yeah, a lot going on, but it just, um, I feel like it just makes you tougher and it pushes you. You just got to do it. Otherwise, yeah. it's not going to get done. And then that sort of translates into your training and your playing, hopefully, um, that, that toughness will hopefully come through. <laughs> you know, I actually remember another friend of ours, an old teammate, Carla Cowan. She's another yeah. one who's just recently had a yep. barb and who's come back. And she said the same thing, like coming back, it was a struggle at first, but then she said she's like at her fittest that she's ever been. Like her Bronco time's the quickest. So good. It's ever been. And um, yeah, it's just crazy what the body's capable of, hey? Yeah. Talisha O'Neill, she's the same. I know she put up a post saying like she's the fittest she's ever been. It's just that driving factor that you've got a little someone that um, you're doing it for and and also just like you really are grateful for the time that you have to yourself so you make the most of you know if you've got an hour to yourself to go to the gym like you make the most of it if you've got yeah. your training it's almost like that's your time to go and um, like feel yourself again and you just value it a bit more and um yeah, you, it's just um, means a whole lot more. Yeah, I yeah. love that. And with your fitness as well, I know we touched on it the other day, just speaking away from the potty, but um, you're feeling really good now, right? Because I think we're similar. We're both feeling good in pre-season at the moment. We're three weeks yeah. in compared to week one. It's a lot tougher, but yes. is, is that the case? Yeah, it is. Like like you and I did a whole lot of like off-season training. So pre-pre-season, like you were dragging me out, getting me running, which I am... <laughs> very grateful for now at the time not so much but like I needed it and obviously like felt off the pace like was just coming back from after bodes but yeah. um now with just like some consistent training back with the team like there's like yeah there's nothing like being in those sort of environments where mm. you have someone pushing you um and I feel like I'm like getting there again which is um it's nice to know. I'm actually enjoying going into the session. I'm enjoying getting into the con part. Yeah. Like a little not bit more. Dreading yeah, it, not hey. dreading it. I'm like, I'm up for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And now you mentioned your mum and how much of a big support that she's been for you. Mm. And I see it as well. Like sometimes I'm over because we need to do work stuff and she's there <laughs> watching birds and yeah. like, she's amazing. Such great support. But what is the support like now for, um, like for you as a mum with the roosters? Is there some sort of support that they're offering? Yeah, so um, all the stuff with the uh, CBA and um, the NRL pregnancy policy, um, there are some things on offer now, which is pretty cool. Like um, obviously the pay is one thing and your contract terms and conditions, but then even little things like being able to have um, – your child that's under two years old and a carer come away to away games with you. So good. Which is like so cool. So like Matt's so excited. Game one we're up in um we're versing Brisbane. So we're up there and they can both come along. That's so cool. Which is awesome. And then like Roosters as a club, just like policy stuff aside, they've just been awesome too. Like I brought them to training last week. Um we had like a an Arvo session into watching the men's play and um a little bit of like a team intro on the field for the girls as well so they came along and um just yeah watched our session we had dinner together they were able to come and enjoy like a meal with us and then like got tickets to come to the game too so just those little things that um you know mean a lot to to us as a family and show that they support us is um yeah, I just feel very lucky and, and grateful to be part of a club that supports us. Yeah, I yeah. bet that would have been the highlight of Bax's week. It was, <laughs> it was. And like Bax has been awesome too. Like it takes a village, honestly. Like when people ask me, how do I juggle all these things? How do I get to training? How do I, get, um, you know, do this podcast? How do yep. we coach? How do we do it all? It's literally um, my family support, my mom, Bax. Like they um, literally the reason why I can do it. Yep. Otherwise, it's it's not going to happen. So very, very lucky. I, I've sort of hopped on about it my whole life since playing footy. But um, they are definitely like my why and the reason why I am able to do what I love, which That's is cool. It. Blessed. Very blessed. Blessed. But let's have a look. Can you tell us what, say, like an actual day for you looks like? Think of like maybe a training day. Mm -hmm. um, what does that look like? Yep. Um, well, it starts like 1.30 a.m. <laughs> wow. Getting up to feed Bodie, whether it's Matt or I, we take turns. He's awesome with that. Yep. But literally like 
I'm used to it now, but like it is pretty exhausting. But yeah, he's still having like those one or two feeds around, you through know, the, one thirty, five thirty. Usually up around six thirty with Bodie having a yarn in the cot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Love that. Wake up, mum and dad. I'm yep. ready for the day. <laughs> um, then what do we do? We get carts up. Yep. He's a sleeper in her ass, so we've got to literally drag him out of bed, <laughs> get him ready for school. Um, it's called Matt and Carter go to the same – Matt's teacher. They go to the same school at Endeavour High. Um, but on the odd day, maybe I'll have to drop him off. Um, and then usually I'll try to get either a gym session in, if it's a non-training day. If not, we usually catch up and do some CK work. Yep. Um, I do a little bit of coaching at Endeavour as well with the girls' um, rugby program um, two days a week. Um, and on the other days, you and I – as you know, work at another school. Yep. Um, and then it's usually straight into travelling to our Roosters team session, yep. whether it's in Moore Park, sometimes we're at Leichhardt, a bit all over the place at the moment. Um, and then home, back. try to get back in time to give Bodhi a kiss goodnight before he falls asleep um, and then into bed to do it all again. It's full on, isn't it? It's a lot, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I love it. I love that. And I just have to give you a massive rap because I know how hard you're working and how <laughs> like how hard it is with the juggle of the two kids. And I think you're just a super mama. Thank you. And I can't wait to see you back out on the field. Yes, I'm excited. And like, it's just, yeah, it's awesome. And I want to shout out to all the other mamas doing it too, because yes. I'm not the only one. So yep. the, the lovely mums that we've spoken about, big shout out to you. I know there's a few more out there. Um, It'll be worth it when game one comes around and um, we're back playing the game that we love. Okay, so just a little bit of a story. Story. Yes. <laughs> um, we had Jess from the Female Collective come in and talk to our team the other day mm -hmm. and she did maybe a, an hour chat on all things female health. So all the fun, yeah. fun things all the fun like stuff. periods and breast injuries and um, things on like pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. And one thing that caught my eye or a bit of a story behind it which I reckon you can definitely relate to <laughs> um is she spoke about the the high number of female athletes that experience like bladder leakages mm -hmm. or like <laughs> peeing their pants sort of thing because of um pelvic floor issues or whatnot and yeah. I remember her showing the statistics and I was kind of like oh wow like that's interesting like I was like for me like I haven't had kids are like can't can't really relate but yeah. um I was like I probably maybe it's happened once but didn't think too much of it and I was yeah. like yeah, cool, whatever, move on. Anyway, we went into our field training that night and we did a bit of tackle. And I remember it was just like 60%, you know, like run, someone will tackle you, fall onto the pad sort of thing. And you know, yep. when you start off, like you don't really go too hard. You hate being that person who goes like hundy when yeah. you're not meant to be going hundy yet. Don't like, be that guy. Yeah, it's more technique focused. So <laughs> I remember like, I think I was lined up um, with Emma, with Emma Tonegato. And I remember just being like, okay, just don't be here. I don't try to run too hard and then ruin the drill for her. Like, we're just going at 60%, like I'm told. So I remember just jogging in like 60% and she just absolutely whacked me like straight in the gut and I full peed my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was a full pee actually, a bit dramatic, oh but my gosh. got me a beauty. And I just remember being like, now you know how it feels. I just peed my pants <laughs> and I remember saying it out loud. I remember to one of our coaches, he would have been like, what the hell? Like, you stupid girl. One of the male coaches? Yeah. They're so awkward about it, So awkward. They? And then so another funny. girl got like, another one of the girls got like, need in the vagina. And she's like, oh my God, <laughs> like, need in the vagina. And I was like, just that shit's painful. Dying laughing. But is that something that happens often? Or can not relate. Often? But can yeah. relate. Can yeah, relate. Yeah, 100%. That's mum life. But I love that you're, <laughs> you're experienced that before. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So multiple times yeah. on my end um I'm <laughs> sure there's a few mums out there that can re relate also but it's interesting like I've actually been in a lot of work on my yes. um pelvic floor yep. muscles obviously coming back from having the baby um only five months ago so I wanted to make sure I don't want to go out on game day wearing my white shorts no however they've changed the color of the shorts that's oh, another subject grateful. no one's wearing white shorts yes. anymore. so they should which makes sense but anyway whatever shorts I'm wearing yep and just having pissing myself <laughs> like I need to make sure that shit is tight and <laughs> staying up and I mean I'm on, I'm tracking well but I had I've been going to shout out core restore the yep. lovely Alex has been um helping looking me after out you. looking yep. after my pelvic floor and um also my like ab strength I like there's two things I've been on one it's called the M cellar chair so you sit on it and it like tightens or contracts and releases so yep. it's a, that's more to like 
tighten your pelvic floor. Um, but I went to a women's health physio and found that I've actually got a tight pelvic floor, which is not a good thing yeah. either. Um, so I struggle to relax, which can also um, lead to leakage. Yep. So I've jumped on the uh, M sculpt, which is like a device you put on your abs. Yep. And it works your abs so that um, they're st- a bit stronger so it can release some tension for your pelvic floor. So cool. But yesterday, or on Wednesday, sorry, earlier this week, last week, I had a... Um, an ab sculpt session. I'm going to blame that. Like, so maybe I was a little bit overworked and I like had the worst leakage of my life that <laughs> leakage night. Leakage or like? Like wet. I should have just gone to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I had to go and halfway through the session, I, like I had some spare, some spare tights and undies in the bag. I had to go no change. Way. That is Because so no one funny. wants to be around that. Look at us peeing our pants but, together. Hey, it's the <laughs> realities of females <laughs> in contact sports, right? That's hilarious. But, I mean, like, if I did that a couple of years ago, I would have been so embarrassed. I'm at the point of my life. I don't care. It's yep. what happens. Yep. Um, You're a mum. You've got a good excuse. I, what's my excuse? <laughs> Nothing. I just needed need to go to, toilet. You need Should've to get gone. on the chair. I know. Too funny. That's the best. So hopefully we can sort that out. Yeah. No peeing our pants in the games. <laughs> <laughs> well, I reckon that's that's us for another episode. Great epi. Great epi. Great epi. So, um... Game two, Women's State of Origin. Yep. They're playing on Thursday night at Queensland Country Bank Stadium. So that's a cowboy stadium. Pretty yep. cool. 7.45 p.m. kickoff. It's streaming on the same. Yep. Um, Just about Channel everything. 9, KO, Foxtel, whatnot. So if you're in that hood and you're one of our listeners, get there and watch. If yes. not, get on and make sure you watch the girls. We want those ratings to go up even more. Yep. Um, but yeah, pumped for that. Another great game. Go the Blues. Go the Blues. And for all of our listeners, make sure you guys are liking and subscribing, please. We're trying to go crazy with this. We're still waiting for that sponsor. Oh, yes. We do need a sponsor. So if anyone's just thinking, like, just keep thinking, but reach out. Hit us up. We'll be great. Great partnership. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, we'll see you guys next week. We'll be back with a review. Um, and then the following week we have another guest planned, Yay. which will be really cool. We love guests. Yes. We don't want to hear ourselves too much. We hate the sound of ourselves. Hate it. Anyway. Why are we doing a podcast? Who knows? Hopefully you don't mind it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys next week. Bye.